everybody and welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be starting the Redstone Academy. We'll be teaching you anything that has to do with Redstone. Well, let's get started with the basics. Okie dokie. So today we'll be taking a look at some of the redstone basics, for example, pistons and sticky pistons, buttons, levers, that sort of stuff. So, as you guys know, you, if you play Minecraft, you probably know what a piston does. It can push blocks. So, we have, you cannot place, actually, a button inside, it, it, within the piston. It breaks it. So, you have to place it next to it, also the lever. So, pistons can push up to two blocks. So if you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then we place this level lever right here. It can push all of them. And it seems like a lot of blocks, but once you start getting into flying machines and that sort of stuff, it's not too much. When you put thirteen blocks though, it cannot push them. It can do absolutely anything. So yeah, that's the maximum capacity of pistons. Sticky pistons don't just push the blocks, they also retract the block. So if you see here, we power it, unpower it, and it retracts. If you put more than one block, you can also push up to 12 blocks, same as this piston. But it will only retract the block that it is touching. So these blocks stay here. That one moves. And also, if you put two pistons, sticky pistons, like this, and then a block in front of them, you can make this extend, then this one. But to retract it, you cannot do this. What I'm, you cannot do what I'm about to do, which is retract this one, then this one. Because unless this piston is retracting, it will not take back this one, this block. So what you want to do is power this again and retract again. But that's more complicated. We'll get to that later. Right now, another feature that sticky pistons have, which is only in the Java version of Minecraft, is that they can spit out blocks. So if you get... Let's get an observer right now. Let's get an observer, yeah. Okay. So if you place an observer, which gives off a one-tick pulse, I will be explaining observers later, but whenever they detect a change here, as you will see right now. So see this, whenever they detect that something happens, they give off a one tick pulse. So if we do this, so how the light turned on. That way, you, you can do changes in front of the observer and the pulse will come out. Now the re this redstone thus was not powering this piston because it was um, redirected. So that's redirectional stuff. Also, but what I want to show you is that if you place an, uh, if you place a sticky piston, and then you place an observer, which gives us a one tick pulse, when this you extend this sticky piston, or it could be a regular piston also, but then you won't be able to retract it. So when you extend this, the observer will detect the change and give off a one tick pulse, and look at what happens. See. It spit out the block. The sticky piston spits out the block. If you do it again, it takes it back. This, I'm actually, I think it's a T flip flop. Maybe I'm on a stable circuit. Honestly, I don't know the difference. And so that's basically it for observers. They're extremely useful. You can use them for many, many ways. And they're very important. Another thing about, um, Red zone is you want to know your pulse strength. If you want a pulse strength to last longer, as we're going to demonstrate right here, you want to use a wooden button. So if we get a stone, stone button right now, instead of the observer, and you place it, oop, that's a lever, <laughs> look at the pulse difference. This one, as you can see, lasts quite long. This one, last shorter
buttons are very important also. It depends on what you want to use. Because not, not only if you have, for example, a door and you press the button you want to get in, these the stone button will be a bit harder to be able to get through the door because you'll have less time. Stone button, uh, wooden button will give you more time. I'm confusing this up. But also, if you want to make this thing that gives you exactly one stack of whatever item you need, or 16, depends on how many dispensers you have, which we'll cover later on in our channel, you would need a stone button. Wooden buttons will give you a lot more. So, yeah, those differences are important. Then we have redstone torches. Redstone torches act almost like redstone blocks, but a redstone block can be moved. So you can move a redstone block with a piston, the torch you cannot. So whatever you place next to the torch, not cor corners don't count, it will not power oh, that, uh, okay. It will not power the corners, if you can see here, but if you place it, and I did it again. <laughs> okay, okay, let's just ignore that. So if you place anything, it'll power it, as you can see here. Also, pistons next to it will be powered. Same as the redstone block. The redstone block over here, it will be powered. The only difference, another difference, actually, I shouldn't say the only one between these two, is that if you put a block on top of the torch, it can power this redstone dust. So you can see this dust is currently powered. Let's try and get that over. Okay, okay, yeah. I uh, gotta get it right here. So you see, this one is being powered. Now, also, it doesn't only power the dust on top of it. The whole block is powered. That's why the rest of the dust gets powered. So if I put the uh, piston right there, it extends. And you can do it in any phase you want, any direction. It doesn't have to be... It doesn't have, the piston doesn't have to be facing the face that it's faced. Okay, that was a bit confusing. But what I meant to say is that if you're placing it here, it doesn't have to be facing exactly this way. It could be also... It could also be sideways here and also on the top. So yeah, in redstone blocks, what when you do this, it doesn't the power signal or yeah, the signal does not travel through the blocks. As you can see, this isn't being powered. And that is very important because they act almost the same way. But if you want to power something that's above, then you should use a redstone torch. If you don't, then you should use the block. Now, if you power the block in which a redstone torch is on, so this, this by the way, the dust, it's powering everything around it. This will actually be changed in the nether update, that it'll look like a, the bedrock edition, that looks like an X. So we'll have that, but this is actually powering this, I mean, it's connected to this, this, and that. But just to make it simpler and more visual for you guys, I'm going to do it like this. So if we power this with anything, I'm going to use a redstone block so you can see it doesn't only work with torches, this torch powers off. So now, if I place a piston over here, it will not power. Though if I stop powering this block, it powers back on. So this also works with torches, and even if I, you put a button here and do it, you can see that this piston, this, I mean, this torch will power off. Now this also works. Because if you put, if, this also works if the torch is over here and you have a redstone dust over here. Because when, when you have a dust on a block, the block is powered. Right now, if you have it like this, the block, and you only have a one strong signal strength, this will not be powered. Though in the new snapshot, since the signal strength will travel up to this, from the side of the block, which right now has no hitbox, but it will have, then this block will be powered. So right now, let's just power the block from like up, up, above here. So as you can see, the torch is off. And this also works if you put just a button over here. So let's get a lever and a button. If you put them over here, see it powers off. If you put the lever and turn it on, this powers off. This is very useful because you can make and and or uh, circuits with it. And then an or circuit is an end one is both items or torches or whatever have to be on or off for the mechanism to work. The or one is either one. So the torch helps to do both because if you have 
right here a torch and then you have another one right here oh this is also by the way I should mention very useful for combination locks so and then I have two of these right and I want this piston to shut off two levers so I want this piston to shut off then ooh, okay I gotta extend this there we go then I need to power both blocks not one so that's an end circuit as you ooh, as you will see if I only power this one then th yeah this redstone is shut off this torch but this one is powering everything so it will still not shut off if I do only this one the same thing happens vice versa this one powers everything while well, this one is off this one is still powering it but if you turn on both levers both torches will shut off the whole thing will shut off and the piston will shut off as you can see over here so now let's get to something more sim uh let's start doing some actual mechanisms like doors okay okay so here we have two iron doors which i should yeah okay they look better now these iron doors can be turned on and off well any door can be turned on and off by redstone signals so if you see if i step on this pressure plate it'll emit a signal to any block around it not including corners any block like these and it'll turn whatever is there that's a redstone compon component on or off depends like torches would go off that's why i said on and off but it, uh, so yeah see so this is a very simple redstone door this way you you can have them only in the inside of your house these pressure plates and you walk out Ooh, okay you can make it so that both doors turn on though that i'm gonna save that mechanism for the piston ones because that's a lot more interesting but you can just walk through and they'll shut off behind you if you don't want zombies to come to your house then you can just take this away when you come in if it's not iron doors if i had made them regular doors like this ones then you can just open it and then walk in and they automatically close behind you and to go out okay this this door's not placed well there we go ease now it's good but now piston doors are a bit more interesting they have a lot more action if you want to start in a survival world and you're in the beginning of your survival world then you should probably stick with these for the meantime but then later on you want to change to piston doors to make your base look cooler so let's get some piston doors so today we will not be making the most complicated redstone piston door because we're only gonna focus on the things that i have already taught you like torches and dust and that sort of and pistons that's basically it so what you want to do is go down here place a few pistons this is a temporary block you can remove it right now and get your two by two piston door set up now you want to leave a four block space between between them that way when they extend they don't clash into each other that would technically break your mechanism and you do not want that so then once you have these set up oop, i broke that one <laughs> all right what you want to do is power these two pistons at the same time oh, oh. Well, you want them to be powered, and then what you want is that when you step on a pressure plate, they shut off. So what we're going to do is going to build a small base over here, like this. Put our two pressure plates that we're going to be stepping on. And if you think about it, there's nowhere for this signal to go, because unless you want to, do, to make this signal go here, then, yeah, you don't have to dig underground. But this would not look so good. Also, we will not be. There is an easier and better way to make this using repeaters, although we will not be doing that yet. We will, but not yet. <laughs> so, what you want to do is see this redirection. You don't want that. So, if you're going to build your resonator like this, just block this off. That way, now when you step on this pressure plate, they turn on, but you don't want that. This is not an efficient or a good way to build your door. So, what we're going to do is dig down actually one block and I should have probably thought of doing it a bit higher. Okay, you know what? We're going to do it a bit higher. 
So now that we have these over here, these pressure plates, when you step on them, as I'm going to demonstrate over here by powering this piston, or not, does this not work? Oh, okay. That was stupid of me. They have to be one block under the, the uh, pressure plates, the redstone. So this pressure plate will power this block and the signal will power anything that's on this block. Now, it seems like it's a big space and it will not work. Although, technically, this block, I mean, this redstone is part of this block over here that you, it's like, it's not a block, it's a redstone dust. So it will be powered. So, ooh, I fell again. Okie dokie. So when you step on this, see, it'll power it. Now, what I was going to mention earlier is if you have two redstone dust, like I have right here, when you step on on one pressure plate, everything will be powered in both directions. So from there, if you're, we're going to put this here, that is powering in both directions, this redstone dust. So you only have to step on one and everything will power. So now if we grab this thing that we have over here and we lead it to, to uh, we, we're going to redirect it soon. Okay, I don't know why it's really okay. So right now you want your piston to your and your pistons to be uh, closed, like extended, when you walk into your when you're not stepping on the pressure plates. I mean, otherwise it, it, that would that would suck, right? So what we're gonna do is we're, see these pistons. We want to power them. So we're gonna take redstone torches. Now an easy way to power the redstone torches is. Just I mean, the this is to just place a block. Is it here? One higher, over here. See, once you do that, if you place this block right here, it it, it will be powered, and this piston will be powered. And then if you pre put the redstone dust on top of it, see that? Wonderful. Both pistons are extended. Now, all you have to do is grab your redstone signal. And redirect it to that block. So now this block will be powered. That will shut off. And that will work. So we're going to make this little see, mustache, shape, mustache shape, shape over here. So we're going to go one, two, like that. Fill this in. Then go out two more blocks. Put the rest on the torch. The block. Ooh, right there. And this. So now your piston door is closed. Now you don't need this block. That's just because I was too lazy to remove it. But now I remove it. When this is closed, if you just fill this in over here, then you're gonna see that when you step, that it's it's completely hidden. It's a completely hidden piston door, except of course that it's one block inward. If you wanted to a flush door, which means it's perfectly aligned with the wall, then that's that'll be more complicated we'll have to do another video on that later on in the channel now if you notice that if i put pressure plates over here it doesn't work i can't get out now so what you want to do is do the same thing that we did here so see how if we step on these pressure plates that are above these blocks these turn on and it powers all in every direction then we want to do the same thing for here so if we just grab our Two redstone signal the uh, dust and we put them over here whenever you step on this block on this uh, pressure plate this is gonna power so now if you just connect it like that it should all work perfect it is turning into nighttime again i'm gonna set it today now you can just decorate your door however you want Put a roof above it. Do whatever you feel the need to do with your door. There it is. You can also add your floor here. It will not affect anything. And well, that's basically the smallest you can get with 2x2 two two piston doors. Oh, from the size. Unless you want to make it from the roof. But to one side, you'll, be, you'll have to go up, not on the other. If you want to make that closest from the roof and from the floor. But that will be covered in a different video. That is it for today, everybody. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
if you stay to the end, well, congratulations. And, well, I hope to see you soon. Hasta la vista.